what makes Detroit's jazz community different from any other communities that you know you've experienced? In in this place, you have a chance to learn from those from many generations. People are very forthcoming with giving information because you know the the old heads and the veterans in the community they really want to see our music thrive they really want to see jazz go on and reach farther heights of the next generation and they really want to see the music progress and see how it takes shape over time too so there are so many people that are um that are very open to hearing what what people in my generation and my contemporaries have to add to the tradition it's not just music that's passed on it's other you know cultural traditions within the jazz community that you know are passed down from generation to generation so what are some of the lessons or you know stories like that 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 you've come away with so far i've come away with a multitude and i'm uh, very grateful for them you know um the fact of uh being a person of your word and how your word is your bond right because being a being a musician and a performer all you have is your word if you don't show up then the gig can't happen or you're going to put somebody in a bad spot to have to find somebody else so it's if you say you're going to be someplace you're going to do something at a certain time you're going to be at that place on that day at that time and you don't want to you know you don't want to upend somebody's trust if you tell somebody that you're going to learn some of their music you go on and learn it if you tell someone you're going to send them some music you're going to learn it so it's just, you know, kind of that process of diligence. And I've gotten that from both, you know, both my mother, especially, and from many of my mentors on the scene. You've been on uh, a drum line during the Detroit Will Breathe protests. So what prompted you to participate in that and, and go out there and do that? The drums is within that context, you know, it's, it's a very unique situation as a drummer because, you know, we're really kind of, helping everybody stay, stay on their, stay on their feet, stay on the mission, you know, continue with the chant leaders, you know, cause there's a, there's actually been a few, a few movements that I've heard of that have kind of fizzled a little bit, you know, without there being a rhythmic element that is, uh, that's helping to, you know, carry the bus forward. And, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful for the other drummers that I've met in this process because, you know, there's so many other people that are out there that have, you know, some of the same wise and some different wise than me. And we're all out there for the same reason. People I've never met before. And, you know, I just feel like it's really something that's, um, that, that can be a part of history. What is the most important thing to you about jazz? Uh, that's a loaded question, my man. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, <laughs> but, um, I say that the most important thing to me is is um I call it uh I call it action in the affirmative the 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 spirit of yes the spirit of yeah let's do this the spirit of well this is a new thing to me but I'm gonna learn it right now and we're gonna do it and we're gonna figure it out and we're gonna make things happen you know we're gonna we're gonna make people jubilate and we're gonna we're gonna bring we're gonna bring not only art to the people, but we're gonna bring them some spontaneous good energy that they need, whether it's live or in the studio. So to to me, jazz is jazz is about yeah. Jazz is like kind of like a small community, you know, subculture type thing. Everybody knows. The progress of other of of, of uh, in the development of the young folks. Mm -hmm. We always this this particular genre always kept up with young people, because the energy always comes from young people, and the, and the, uh, the ideas, although the knowledge is from uh, the older folks. There's rigor, in the in the community the community education school here. Um, the, the rigor is that there's expectations that you will learn the music, that you will execute. And you don't realize it till you go other places, how blessed it is to be working in Detroit. The level of musicianship is just strong here in Detroit. I mean, not only the level of musicianship, but the knowledge of the songs. I mean, you can call a song and everybody knows it, you know, and knows the right changes. 
there's uh, traditions that are very uh, African-centered, like respecting your elders. And I think those, those things to me are really, are, are, are very precious. And they're the things that really make the community what it is. You know, Barry's lessons also went beyond music. Um, Charles McPherson, alto saxophone player, tells a story about when Charles was 15, 16 years old, he was going over, had begun going over to, to Barry's house to, to study. One day, Barry saw that he had his uh, report card. And, and Barry said, Charles, I see you have your report card. Can I see that? And Charles says, yeah, sure. So he gives it to him. And Barry looks at the report card, kind of furrows his brow, and he looks up at Charles, and he says, well, I see you've got all Cs here. And Charles sort of offhandedly says, well, yeah, I guess I'm just average. And Barry really lit into him. And he said, look, man, you cannot be average and play this music. Your heroes, Charlie Parker, Bud Powell, Dizzy Gillespie, Thelonious Monk, these are not average men. You got to get it together. And Charles says that talk really changed his life. He shaped up, started reading, made the honor roll. We should remember that, that the lessons of people like Barry Harris and, and teachers, music teachers, sometimes go way beyond music. All the skills that you learn in jazz, you could run a Fortune 500 company because you have to deal with so many personalities and you have to accept the independent mind and thinking and openness of other people to be able to, to, be able to play. And in, the, in order to play with another person, perform with another person, you have to evaluate and negotiate all the time. Sometimes when I'm playing with a drummer, they're not gonna play in my time. So they just kind of play, they're the boss. So I can fight against that and if I fight against that, the music doesn't sound good. But if I agree, I have to like let go of my ego to, and agree. And that's, that negotiation happens in the first three minutes of the gig. And so we have to, at some point, humble ourselves to the music. So if the drummer is feeling better than me, I go with them. But generally, if I'm making it feel better than them, they go with me. And so that's a negotiation that you have to do in real time. I've been in meetings with people where people have their way they think about it. And I said, well, let me hear your perspective. And sometimes they win me over, but sometimes I'm able to sway them with what I'm thinking because I listen to them. And being a bass player, you're in the middle of everything. So you have to listen. Listening is the key to leadership because it doesn't have to be your idea. It just has to be a good idea.